And he says, and the communion of the Holy Ghost. Someone say communion. communion. The Greek word used there is koinonia. Koinonia. I don't know how they pronounce it. By koinonia. Koinonia. The way it sounds. Amen. So K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. Koinonia or koinonia. My mother said when you say K, it's a K. When you say an O, it's an O. When you say an I, it's an I. When you say an N, it's an N. When you say an O, it's an O. When you say an N, it's an N. <laughs> I is I. A is A. So it's koinonia. <laughs> koinonia. Or koinonia. I don't know how they pronounce it. So you see, that's a very important word for us to understand as children of God. Koinonia or koinonia simply means a partnership. Someone say partnership. partnership. It also means a participation. Someone say participation. participation. It also means... Um, <laughs> should I say that one? Are you sure? I know you know fellowship because other versions have used what? Fellowship. But there's another word that probably we may not be familiar with. It also means social intercourse. I know you only know the other dimension. <laughs> Leave that alone. Amen. We are in the presence of God. Amen. Switch off your minds. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when the Bible says the communion of the Holy Spirit is talking about the partnership. This is a partnership between you and the Holy Spirit. We don't know that the Holy Ghost came to be our partner. I don't know whether you're hearing me. We only think about the Holy Ghost as someone to help us to speak in tongues. It's beyond speaking tongues. The Holy Ghost came as your partner. Are you hearing me? Someone who is going to stand with you. He's going to walk with you. He's going to wake with you. He's going to rise up with you. He's going to sleep with you. Are you hearing me? He's always there for you and with you. It's a partnership. So when you talk about partnership, you're talking about achieving greater results than you could have done by yourself and that he could have done by himself. Mm, oh, yeah. You're not hearing me. Are you hearing me? Someone say partnership. It's a partnership. So you know that individually, you can't achieve greater results than the, than the two of you. It has to take the two of you. You know, it's like um, the other simple concept in the Bible is joint heirs. The Bible says we're what? Joint heirs with who? So in other words, without you, Jesus will not inherit. And without Jesus, you can't inherit. It doesn't mean 50-50. No. If Jesus comes and says, Father, I am here to inherit, God will say, no. Where's the joint heir? And when you show up yourself, hey, Father, I'm here to inherit. God will say, no, no, no. Where's the Redeemer? So the two of you must appear together to own everything. That's joint heirs. Not 50 50 heirs. You take 50, I'll take 50. No. Joint heirs. I don't know if you're hearing me. So when we talk about the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, we're talking about a partnership. Most of us, we think outside the Holy Spirit. We think in the realm of humanity. We look at ourselves as ourselves. We think of us as us. We think of us as having no one to help us. We think of us as just using our own ability and our own power. Listen to me and listen real good. You see, God gave you the Holy Ghost to be your partner. So even if you are talking about a solo business, no, you are wrong. As a child of God, there's no solo business. There's no solo trader. You are already in a partnership with the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? You're already in a partnership with the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? So in other words, there's no failure. There's no limitation. There's no day you're going to say, I am alone. What do you mean you're alone? 
What do you mean you're alone? Someone say partnership. He's there for you. Someone say partnership. Ha. Huh? Hey. Number two, participation. Someone say participation. Participation. You know, participation is very important. The Holy Ghost does not only teach you, He allows you to participate. You are not a passive partner in the partnership. You are a participative partner in the partnership. That's very good English. (laughs) You are participating. Are you hearing me? So you see, when you when when you lay hands on the sick, the first times that no, I will not lay hands on. (laughs) You get drunk. You want to hear the rest of the service, and your people there want to have an interpreter. You see? (laughs) Participative partnership. The Holy Ghost does not just do things for you. He allows you to participate. Not just doing things for you. No. Even when it comes to prayer, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what to pray, to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So what does it mean? When you go into prayer, number one, you are handcuffed. Double, in fact, double handcuffed. You don't know what to pray for and you don't know how to pray for what you don't know what to pray for. Amen. Double chobadi. That's correct. Double chobadi. Now the Holy Ghost comes to help you in that prayer. So he doesn't come to pray on your behalf. That you are sleeping. <laughs> and then the Holy Ghost is busy praying in the next room. No, he won't do that. But you have to participate as an equal participant in the relationship. With the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? So what it means, you have to open your mouth. Begin to pray. And then he will take over. Begin to make intercession from within you. Are you hearing me? It's a partnership. Together you achieve results. Together you go to higher levels. Together you go higher. Am I talking to someone right here? Together you begin to change things around you. Am I talking to someone right here? Say yes. yes. Can I go one level deeper? Listen to this. Every spirit is illegal on earth. Are you hearing me? Every spirit is illegal on earth. Are you hearing me? Whether it's holy or not holy, as long as it's a spirit, it is illegal on earth. Because the earth was never created for spirits. It was never given to spirits. It was given to man. So any spirit which wants to operate on earth must have a partnership with an earthy dweller. You are not hearing me. They have to partner with someone who is an earthy dweller. That's why even a demon does not just walk down the streets. Hey, look, hey, hey, demon. No, it has to enter an earthy dweller. It has to enter a body and express itself through the body. Are you hearing me? So the Holy Ghost cannot come here and begin to preach. No matter how much intercession you do. Holy Spirit, we pray on Sunday, come preach to us. No. He will not come and preach. Are you hearing me? He will go look for a partner. He will go and look for a partner. A united vessel. He will find somewhere, somewhere, someone. Are you hearing me? And he take the person and he partner with him and begin to preach the gospel. Say yes. yes. Say Holy Spirit. I am, I am ready. Partner with me. Let's do big things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Say yes. yes. <laughs> Say neighbor. neighbor. I, am I am dangerous. I don't know whether you're hearing me. Every spirit. <laughs> Is illegal on earth. 
it must function by the permission of man. So we know prayer. Prayer is talking to God. But can I, can I talk like to mature people? Prayer is not talking to God. Prayer is giving God permission to intervene in the earthly realm. So when the devil says, why are you intervening? God says, why are you asking me? I've got permission from someone in the earth. Is it making sense? In the book of Genesis chapter 1, God said, let us make man in our, after our, let us have dominion. Let us have dominion. Let us have dominion. I'm catching you right there. Your, your answers are suspect. It says what? Let them have dominion. What did he say? Let them have dominion. God excluded himself in the dominion of the earth. Let them have dominion. So it's only one who's given by dominion by God who can invite God to come intervene in the earthly realm. That's why your prayer is very important. That's why your prayer is very powerful. So when you say, oh Lord, I pray, do this too. You're giving him permission to intervene. Without that, he'll be illegal. That's why even Jesus, he didn't come like an angel. Uh Uh Hebrews 2 verse number 14. And 15, he did not take on himself the form of an angel. But he took on him the form of the seed of Abraham. Why? Because this seed of Abraham is an earthling who has given dominion on the earth. So Jesus had to come like one of them. If Jesus came like an angel, the devil said, no, 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 time out, sir. You are illegal. You cannot deliver them. You are illegal. I didn't take my authority from an angel. I got my authority from who? Adam. Someone said partnership. So you see, you are an equal as in A-N, not U-N. Because they are all pronounced the same, aren't they? You are an equal partner. In this business with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs you. The Holy Spirit for him to achieve what he came for. He depends on you. So that statement. The communion. Of the Spirit. Is bigger. Than just mentioning it at the end of the service. I think we should be mentioning at the beginning of the service. We should be praying that prayer at the beginning of the service, at the beginning of your day. When you walk up in your office, you're like, yeah, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Be with me to tell us I'm in my office. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Not when you finish. You are doing it by yourself. Now you want him to partner with you at the end. What for? No wonder people who are born again achieve human results. They forget the partnership of the Holy Ghost. As a born again child of God, you are not supposed to achieve human results. It's neither by power (laughs) nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Things must move at supernatural speed in your life. Things must happen at a supernatural dimension. Your results must be supernatural. Your achievement if you're a student in class must be supernatural. There was a young man called Daniel. The Bible says an excellent spirit was found in him. He beat all the magicians. He beat all the philosophers. He beat all the psychics. And he became their boss. Because of excellence. Someone said, I received that one. one. Even for my children. children. Streams International Prophetic Church. Transforming lives by the power of prophetic.
prophetic revelation. Your lives will never be the same again. Please remain connected at www.streams.org.au. Until next time, Shalom.